Hello everyone, Darkizer here, welcoming you back to the second episode of my Space Engineers Let's Play slash tutorial series. I want to apologize for some of the sound quality of my previous video. The desk that I am using is homemade and is not as solid as something that might be purchased commercially and apparently when I was doing some of my keystrokes last time, particularly when picking up ore, the echo or the reverb from underneath the desktop uh, was uh, reported to me to be a little annoying by some of the viewers. So hopefully the steps that I have taken to isolate my microphone stand from the desk will help improve the sound quality. I would also appreciate feedback on tone of voice, volume of voice, etc., etc., etc. I am using the blue, uh, I believe it is the Snowball microphone, which I'm very happy with. It's very uh, easy to use, but I want to know from viewers and fans out there uh, how the quality is coming through and uh, any constructive criticism that uh, you all might have on how I might improve things would be appreciated. In the last episode, uh, I went ahead and I ground away uh, just about all of the pod here. And today's episode is going to be working primarily on the starter base, which is going to be temporary. I am admittedly a Gemini. I... I Ha often have trouble with uh, making up my mind on things and there have been quite a few times in my life where I have made up my mind to do something and then promptly changed it and uh, as a result I frequently will wind up chasing my tail and, and doing things multiple times and I'd kind of like to avoid doing that for this series. Uh, one of my intentions is to build a base, uh, build up a, a basic base, a starter sort of base, which I'm going to begin laying out as I sit here and ramble. And the starter base is basically, it's going to be enough to get me started and get some slightly more uh, advanced production going. And then uh, when I have reached a sufficient point, I do plan on packing up everything and putting it all on a mobile base of some kind. And as I referred to it in the the last video, plan on going full on uh, mortal engine on the thing because I was a uh, a big fan of the uh, of the movie. Hence the reference. But I plan on uh, going ahead and building a mobile base, assuming that I can actually get this block to go where I want it to go. And uh, I'm going to pack up everything. I'm going to grind down this base, temporary as it is, uh, put everything on, on a large, large block crawler type of base, and then I'm going to move the whole situation someplace else. I'm doing that primarily because I don't have myself in an ideal circumstance here. I Unfortunately, I think I have some some ice relatively close by, but I have every time I have played the game and I have put myself into a, a what I consider to be a good location for a permanent base, then either I have found a better location later on, and then I have regretted where I originally parked myself, or uh, something else has has happened, and and I have, I've regretted my my choice of base location for whatever reason. Either I found out that there was an insufficient number of resources, or what have you. So I've decided to uh, conquer that entire problem and fulfill a lifelong dream of of building a a large crawler type of base. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and and do the whole thing all at one time. Now I'm currently in the process of building up some power and I should have done this before I got up here manipulating the hot bar and so forth I 
I have found through trial and error that one, and then I'm going to accidentally turn off my thruster. There's a bad idea. Let's not be doing that while we're in midair. This is what I get for trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, I have found through trial and error that, which is how I learn how to do most things, that one good, uh, well-placed wind turbine will provide you with enough power for a lot of the starting equipment, the basic assembler or the basic refinery, or when you eventually wind up moving your starter kit to your base, uh, etc., etc. But uh, it often does not provide enough power to run more than one of those at a time. So since I do indeed want to be able to, or I will eventually need to, run more than one piece of equipment at a time, I thought I would just go ahead and start right off with having two wind turbines uh, to just go ahead and, and, and jump start everything. Now I think I'm going to need 10 more interior plates and I'm also going to need 48 girders so we're just going to go ahead and dial up 50 because what's a couple of girders between friends? And I'm going to go back around to my side cargo container and I'm going to put away the stuff that I don't have room for and won't be needing right away anyway so I can carry more stuff. When you queue this stuff up you will see that they're required on the one side and then available on the opposite side. Now, how much I need in order to make what I have queued up is over here and as you can see that number is diminishing as as the number produced goes up and if the number available is in red, then it's obvious that there is not enough of that material to make what is queued. Fortunately for me, I've got almost 500 iron ingots available from the mining and refining that I did earlier. And now I've got to be careful because I've noticed that my hydrogen is very low, so we're going to put that in our suit. Now as you can see the hydrogen bottle, the uh, bottle just went down 10% because I just got done refilling my suit. And I'm going to put that back in there. The hydrogen bottle fills back up, the ice goes down. And that's the magic formula for hydrogen is ice and H2O2 or an O2 H2 generator and power. Now as before I don't have quite enough, oh no, I need another 10 interior plates because I built a second I built a second one of those so we're gonna go ahead and run that and again I I needed 10 iron ingots and I I have over 400 so that's not a problem there's a lot to be said for when you're first getting started just going ahead and uh, when you have to do the mining, which is the most tedious part of, of the operation. I mean, building things, taking things apart, driving around in a rover or flying around in some sort of a ship that you've built yourself and, and seeing the world and, and f discovering things, those are the fun parts of the game. Digging a hole in the ground and extracting resources just to, just to be able to build things and keep things alive. Got a little bit of lag on the... Hmm. On the... Uh, flashlight there there we go okay so now we have two of those and they look like they're turning well and they got the little green lights on top indicating that they're connected and everything's powered so now we're going to see what we need to build next I'm going to have to have a basic assembler because the basic assembler will make the small tubes the large tubes and the metal grids and other things that I need to build larger items. I'm going to want a small cargo container, large grid, because that will hold more things, and I want to be able to store more stuff. I am going to have to build a large grid survival kit, which will largely involve transferring the survival kit from the, from the drop pod. 
And then we have the basic refinery. For those of you that have played the game before the recent update, the basic refinery has taken the place of what used to be known as an arc furnace. An arc furnace was basically a, a full-size refinery cut down so that it would only refine uh, iron ore, nickel, and uh, I believe cobalt. Uh, the basic refinery has turned things around a little bit, and it's basically a survival kit on steroids. You go ahead and you put stone into it, and it will extract the same stuff that you get out of the survival kit just at a much faster rate. However, it does cost more components to build and uh, more power to operate, but it's many, many times faster. You're still going to want a survival kit when you first get started simply because it serves as a respawn point and it's uh, an easy way to recharge your suit. But eventually you're going to get to the point where you have unlocked other facilities that will be able to do that. So for right now, we're going to put the basic assembler and we're going to put the survival kit. We're going to put a small cargo container, which we already had one of, and we're going to put a, a basic refinery right here and these have to be well they don't have to be they should be done in a certain order of priority uh, again I cannot there are some things that I simply cannot build with the survival kit uh, as it is so I'm going to have to have a basic assembler in order to make some more advanced components one of the drawbacks to the basic assembler is the fact that it has exactly one access port so I'm going to turn that sideways. I'm going to start to build this thing. So the access port is here on the, the left-hand side. We can weld up most of this. And I'm being a little wasteful with the steel plate. If I really wanted to be frugal with it, what I would do is take that last 20 steel plate out of my inventory so that it doesn't get welded. And I'm at the, the point now where I'm not that concerned with it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make four displays. And because I was busy talking, I forgot what else I needed, but I think that it was construction components. No, it wasn't construction components because I had those on me already. So let's go back. I do apologize. Nope, it was computers, 80 of them to be precise. And remember what I said earlier about being able to build a lot of something just because it, it doesn't necessarily take a lot of resources. Well, this is one of those points. Now, I can't finish that thing until I get my 80 computers, and that's going to take a few minutes. So now is a perfect opportunity for me to go ahead. I'm going to put the rest of my weighty trash back into the survival kit, and we're going to grab our drill, and we're going to go drill some more stone. One of the things that I have found uh, about Space Engineers, one of the common complaints is the fact that as a sandbox game, uh, it doesn't actually have a goal. And like many sandbox games, it, it typically is the kind of thing where you have to sort of make your own goals. For instance, this particular scenario, since I'm, I'm on an easy start, uh, surviving is not that much of a challenge, but I do want to I do want to uh, build a mobile base of some significant size. I also want to try some experimental processes with regards to having a mobile base with an attached drilling rig so that I can take my mining uh, operation with me, primarily because if, I, if I'm traveling around and I happen to find a better spot to get resources from, then I want to be able to stop and get resources. I also plan on having a uh, flying mining vehicle and that will be carried along with me on the on the crawler once I get it up and operating. And I want the mining rig to operate in conjunction with the mining vehicle because I want the I want the drill head of the mining rig to be of sufficient size that I'm going to be uh, every time I sink a hole down to get towards get to 
resources, I'm actually paving the way for the mining vehicle to get down there and to be able to operate more efficiently so that I don't have to waste a lot of my time just digging through grass with my drills. I used a similar system as an experiment back when I was doing a lot of hand mining in a, another playthrough that I did not record sometime before the uh, survival update and it worked out fairly well but there's no reason why you can't get two or more birds with one stone if you pardon the pun and now I'd be willing to bet that my computers have all been manufactured but since I've already gone through the effort of digging all of this stone okay there we are I think that's all of it there we go and we've got that So here's our basic assembler. And now that I actually have a port and a control panel, and either one of these would work, the port works best for putting things in and taking things out of the assembler. But you can also use it to access your inventory and your control panel and so forth. Uh, your basic assembler will require 280 kilowatts. The wind turbines are producing 344 and 338 they're both wind clearance is optimal current output is is almost 500 watts on each of these and that's simply because i the assembler isn't building anything right now so the assembler requires one kilowatt just to basically stay warmed up so if you have it turned on it's going to take one kilowatt you can go ahead and turn the thing off if you want just to save power. And if I were running things on a battery rather than just running things off of windmills with infinite power, then I probably would do that. So now we're gonna gather up all of our ingots here and we're going to place them in here. Now you will notice that you can carry, uh, at least at the current settings that I'm at, you could put 10,000 liters worth of material and I put in 421 so the you can put a tremendous amount of material in this thing and it won't be full it will also run uh, or hold rather a lot of produced items so let's say one of the things that I know I'm going to need because I'm going to be building uh, batteries uh, I know that I'm going to need power cells so we're going to go ahead and although to be perfectly honest once you start grinding on power cells then you've got a problem that the uh you grind on a battery the power cells do not remain unfortunately you wind up with scrap metal and you need to make new power cells so let's not go ahead and make any of those just yet let's go ahead and continue with what we were doing now i want to make a small cargo container which means I'm going to need to even put it down, I'm going to need some interior plate. So we're going to go ahead and run up 30 interior plate. And as you can see, it manufactures these things much faster than the survival kit. You'll also notice something that you do not have on the survival kit is the fact that you can disassemble things to uh, get your components back. So let's go ahead, we're going to put this down. And one of the biggest advantages of the small cargo container large block is, uh, unlike the small ones, this actually has a port on every side. So I like to use these as sort of cornerstone blocks to hold stuff together because now I can connect a lot of different things without having to string a bunch of connectors and a bunch of other things together. And we're going to be taking all of this stuff I don't think I'm going to need any of these. Well, we're going to take this anyway, just because we have room for it. Okay, we've got all that stuff. 
Now we're going to need 17 more small steel tubes and a display. And we can still access that port from here. So we're going to run up a display and 20 small steel tubes. And again, I have plenty of material now. I've got a thousand available and I'm going through those relatively slowly for now. So now we're going to go back and refill our suit. And I think I'm going to... Uh, passenger seat is 20 and 20. I'm sure that I have plenty of the construction components. We're going to go ahead and run another 20 interior plates. And this will show us everything that's that's connected to whatever we're currently accessing. And as you can see, the small cargo container is currently empty. The basic assembler only has ingots in it uh, because I keep taking everything out of it right away. And now we're going to go ahead and weld up our passenger seat. And again, I probably could have saved myself that other 10 interior plates. but And then we can sit down and we can look around. But we can also access our terminal, which will give us the ability to produce things while we're sitting here. And as you can see, it recharges our suit. As long as we have power going to the seat, then my suit will be powered. So again, this is a great way if you have something that's, that's running that you're waiting on and you want to go away from your keyboard, but you don't want to worry about your suit power dying while you're, you're gone, just go ahead and plop in a passenger seat and just walk away and leave the game running. So now we have our cargo container and we have our basic assembler. Now we're going to want our, and we go back to our first page, we're going to want our basic refinery. And again, this only has two ports, but that's more than enough for what we're doing. And this takes quite a bit of material to operate, or to build rather. We need another 25 steel plates, another couple of construction components. So we're going to go ahead and produce another 100 steel plates, because you can never have enough steel plates. And we'll wait till we get 25, and then we'll go ahead and take those. And we'll build another... I'm going to go ahead and build another 100 construction components just because I always seem to be running out of the darn things. And again, while that's running, I'm going to go ahead. And now, because I have the cargo container, I'm reminded, I can now put all of this stuff in the cargo container, which has many more times volume than these. So we're going to take these out. We're going to take those out and go ahead and now everything gets put over here. And we only needed a couple of these to get this thing up and running. And we saved ourselves the 20 steel plates. So, And again, basic refinery takes one kilowatt to basically sit there and do nothing. And the maximum required to actually do things is 330. So if I have my basic assembler running, that's 280, 580, 610 kilowatts. My wind turbines between them are generating just a little bit close to 700. So I'm still good. I thought I was going to have to put up a third uh, wind turbine. Now this is the point, now that we have we have power to the base. Ooh, the sun's starting to come up. We have power to the base. I have my basic assembler. I have a cargo container that'll hold things. I have a, a basic refinery, which now, instead of putting ore into the survival kit, I'm going to be putting ore into the basic refinery. 
because that's going to get me a lot more material. And unlike the survival kit where the minimum is 500, you can go to the basic refinery and it will use down to the last fraction of a kilogram of stone and it will still give you stuff. It won't give you much stuff, but you no longer have to worry about having three or four hundred kilograms of stone just laying around not doing anything. So now we're going to come over here. We're going to take off the small cargo containers because they are now superfluous. Take off the stuff that they were fastened to for the same reason. I think I'm going to go ahead and take off the lights because hopefully by the time the sun sets again I'll have light on my base. I think I should move the survival kit. Oops, and as we were talking about earlier the survival kit was fastened to the armor blocks and then the landing gear was fastened to the survival kit. And now, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run a string of armor blocks between the battery and the hydrogen generator just to maintain power between the two and then I can grind away all of this extra stuff. Okay, there we go. Well, and actually I'm going to need this stuff because I have to build my... Now I'm going to... Hmm, let me see. Now we see where we put the starter kit. I could put it around the back side, however I am planning on using it as a respawn point. Although to be perfectly honest, I don't anticipate dying anytime soon. And I know that you guys are going to hold me to that because I probably just jinxed myself and I'm probably going to die in a couple of minutes. Now the large block survival kit is almost identical to the small block survival kit except for the fact that it has two ports instead of one. So we can go ahead and we can put that there. And just because it feels weird not to be able to get there, we're going to go ahead and put some blocks down so we can get there. And you remember what I said earlier about not putting down a way to get up here, even though I thought I might? There we go. Okay. Now the large block size obviously requires more steel plate. So we need another... Eh, get out of the way. There we go. There we go. And now the real fun begins. I have in the past done, shall we say, experimental things with the production of stone or the collection of stone. And so now we're going to do something a little different. And I think, I think I'm going to make a change here. We're going to collect all of this. And all of this is piped together, so I could have just dropped all that over there through the through the refinery. I'm doing this by force of habit. And we're going to turn this, because I had forgotten part of our plan. Oop, forgot that one little nugget of stone. So now we're going to Turn this that way. Yeah. 
And now for what I need, I'm, I know I'm gonna need some interior plate and some motors and you always need you almost always need construction components for things and now we're going to one of the other things that you will commonly use is your conveyor tube now I don't anticipate having to get a new, another survival kit anytime soon so I can just use the conveyor tube and again we're gonna rotate around and get that to where we need it and 12 small steel tubes and four more interior plates so we're gonna produce 10 tubes 10 interior plates Now you notice that the lights are currently green. That means that everything is conveyed properly and material will flow from the cargo container to the basic refinery and back again. Now here's where things get really interesting. I'm going to place curved tube and then one of the reasons why I like unlocking the landing gear is I now have access to a piston and I'm going to plunk the piston down right there you will notice the little red indicator that says that the piston head could not be placed that's primarily because I just got done burying it underground and the voxels will not cooperate with each other. That's perfectly fine. There's a command for putting a piston head on after you have it free. So now, a little hop there. Pretty sure that requires all of that stuff. Oh, we happen to have everything we need. This is good. I'm doing this primarily because, as I mentioned earlier, to me, gathering resources, mining for stone is just about as exciting as watching paint dry. Now, as you can see, I'm out of iron ingots, so I'm not going to get much out of that, so now I need to go digging. Of course, if I'm going to go digging, I need to drop off all the rest of my stuff so I can carry more. Or, But as I said, mining for resources, particularly by hand, mining for resources is just the most boring thing ever, and at least as far as I'm concerned. And so I like to minimize it, and I like to make it more efficient, if at all possible. The amount of material that you can get from a large ship drill going through stone is tremendous. You can get literally thousands of kilograms of stone per minute. And if you have everything hooked up properly, then you also avoid the... Uh, even more tedious than actually doing the mining because as you saw I just I didn't have to mine that for very long even more tedious than that is schlepping it back and forth and uh, dropping it into things now I have access to both the basic refinery and the survival kit the basic refinery is much more efficient and runs much faster as you can see so we're going to drop things into the basic refinery. I could just drop the stone into the cargo container, but then the refinery and the survival kit would compete and each of them would take a portion of it. And while that's fine, I, I don't think that the refinery gives you any more 
material than the survival kit, and I got myself stuck in this hole. I, I don't think that the refinery gives you any more material. It simply does it faster. So now we have those two things. And that turns green and that's all plumbed up. So now this works out con conveniently because now we have no more material that we shouldn't have. You have to be careful when you are drilling near equipment because the drill will inflict damage on equipment. So if I were to sit and drill on this thing, I would eventually break it. You have to be particularly careful when you are doing this. When you are working on things that you merely have a framework for. If you don't have anything welded up, if you're just working with the scaffolding and you've only put down a couple of steel plates or a couple of interior plates worth of material, then things can be very, very fragile, as I will demonstrate. I'm taking, you take your drill, boom, and you're left with scrap metal. So you have to, and now I have no metal plate. So you have to be careful when you're using your tools. Fortunately, scrap metal can be ground into other things. We're going to want one plate to repair that with. And we want to come up here. Now that we've cleared the head of the piston, we go to our piston and it says add piston head. And since this is not grayed out, obviously we have room for that. Now I know that the piston head requires a few steel plates and a couple of large tubes. So we're going to run off another few tubes and it looks like we're, nope, the iron ingots just have to come from, the iron has to be schlepped over from here and you can do this by hand if you want. It will, it will fetch it automatically. But I have found that sometimes in the fetching process it sometimes takes time. Alrighty. Now we'll put my axis ramp back. And now we dug ourselves a sloping access point. And unfortunately I'm going to have to do this. We have eight large steel tubes and ten steel plates. I'm glad I went and got the extra. And now I'm going to have to clear room for the drill because unlike the piston, I cannot simply stick the drill in the ground and then clear around it. It simply will not let me place it. So what I have to do is clear the space around the piston head sufficiently to let me place the drill. And the drill is fairly large. So we have to do a little bit of excavation. And this is one of the reasons why I tend to make my base a little bit bigger than I need to. You That way I don't have to worry about any of these things suddenly collapsing because I managed to cut the ground away. And I am right, uh, I am right click uh, or right mouse drilling here primarily because I appreciate the fact that I'm, I'm losing a bit of material, but I don't really want to take the time to stop and collect everything right now and it's going to be a lot more efficient for me when I get the drill set up. And unfortunately I still can't and this is one of the drawbacks to the Space Engineer system is the fact that I can't tell how much farther I need to go down so it's oops so it's just a matter of trial and error. Run over here. 
Not really sure if that does. I don't feel like getting out a stopwatch to test it. It could be that that recharges a little bit faster than the survival kit, but I'm not really... It seems to be about the same. It recharges the suit. That's all I'm concerned with. And again, I'm not really sure how much farther down I need to go. So we're just going to keep going a little bit here. Moving around in a circle, making a hole. Now that's pretty substantial. Let's make sure that I actually have at least one steel plate. I'm going to feel stupid if I keep trying to place this thing and I don't have it. There we go. And that's just about perfect. 180 steel plates and 40 construction components. So we've got enough construction components. I know we're going to need a bunch of this other stuff. Probably taking a lot of things that I don't need. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of howling about that. I'm going to queue up 200 steel plates and 10 large steel tubes. And I'm going to run out of material. But let me go back with what I've got. Mostly large steel tubes and steel plate. Okay. Seriously? Is this the problem we're going to have now? This is probably going to be the last trip we have to make down this hole. And after I get the drill set up, you'll see why. Now, did I manage to dig myself down here again? Nope, I can still walk out. Okay, that's fine. Now I know that I don't need any of these parts for the drill. So I put all that stuff back. Unlike many YouTubers and probably many players, I have not gone out of my way to run off and, and grab a bunch of ice. As I said, I've been very frugal with the jetpack. I still have probably a little bit of ice left for recharging my jetpack. Most of what I've done I've managed to do with either short bursts of it or just walking around or uh, climbing up a, a short ramp. And that's typically how I prefer to do things. And that's mainly because I've been in I've been on maps where ice was simply not uh, readily available. And I've I've learned to try to work without it. Nope, we're still of course, then again, I think I called up way too many. Probably needed 150 plates. Go to my small build, my small welding section here. Come on, where are you? Yeah, I need another 45 and then the steel tubes. We're going to go back over here. We're going to cancel that. And we're going to put in another 50 plates instead of 100. You can click on this where it says hide empty, which means any equipment that you have that currently doesn't have anything in it, like my survival kit over there on the on the grid uh, will be hidden and so that will make the list shorter and easier for you to search through. If you get to the point where you've built a very large ship or a very large uh, station of some kind and you have lots of cargo containers or lots of equipment that can hold things, most weapons have some sort of built-in cargo capacity they can hold a certain amount of ammunition and so they come up on the list uh, as having cargo capacity and so forth. I do wish one of the numerous things that I I wish for uh, on the user interface is if you click on hide empty I wish that the game would remember that 
And so if I came back, the hide empty would be clicked all the time because then I could simply turn it off. So now we're going to get our tubes and we're going to get our plates and we're going to come over here and we're going to finish welding our drill and again it'll function I just saved myself 115 steel plates and because I can access this I can actually do the programming that I need now I'm going to turn the piston off I'm going to set the velocity of the piston to extremely slowly. I believe the setting that I typically will use is 0 0.05. So it will move almost immeasurably slowly. And then we turn the drill on. And you can hear and see that the drill which has a effective area larger than the drill head uh, is already beginning to collect stone and you can come here and you can see on the drill that it'll grab a certain amount of stone and then that stone is immediately being taken out and moved the basic refinery uh, is able to process it fast enough uh, so that you're not actually seeing the stone accumulate uh, in the refinery now we go to the piston and we turn the piston on and now I'm gonna get the hell out of here before I accidentally slip and fall in front of the drill I have killed myself more times in this game than I care to count mostly by doing something stupid and standing in front of tools now we go to the inventory we hide the empty stuff and as you can see, the basic refinery is getting uh, large intakes of stone, sometimes uh, in the, the hundreds, and it's simply processing it, and then the, the drill is never going to fill up this way. It's all just going to be processed. And as you can see, uh, this is many, many times faster than what I could have done. So... Yes, I, I had to spend some time making the drill, making the piston, drilling out enough stone to actually make the material to do this. But as you can see, I'm, I'm accumulating a, a tremendous amount of uh, material to work with for what I consider to be a relatively small amount of effort up front. So now I basically have, as far as I'm concerned, a bottomless supply of stone and you may be able to hear everything running in the background there now for some reason the iron is accumulating well the basic assembler isn't running so it's not actually fetching anything from the refinery so now I have a huge amount of material coming in and we can go and we can look at the piston and the piston is only at six meters and it will go to 10 so I'm gonna run that out to 10 meters I'm gonna get thousands and thousands of kilograms of stone and then I'm gonna let it run for a minute or so and, and clean out the hole and then I'll simply turn the drill off and then I'll reverse the piston and then I'll bring it back this will give me sufficient amounts of material to do the next step of the operation which is to build a rover because in order to go any further than this, I am going to need to make higher quality materials. That includes metal grid, which I need for making wheels. And so I'm going to need cobalt. And you will notice that uh, all of this has been done without having to go anywhere to explore for anything. And one of the reasons why I like this system is that it doesn't require you to go anywhere to search for cobalt you don't have to find silver you don't have to find gold you don't have to find uh, you know anything else you can do all of this with just digging a hole raking out a whole bunch of stone and just going ahead and, and building up some some very basic supplies and some very basic equipment let me come in and check on things 
Yep, the piston is fully extended. And since the drill is not showing up, it's obviously not drawing any more material. So the drill is as mined out as much as it can. So we're going to turn the drill off. We're going to reverse the piston. And I could always speed up the piston, but I don't care how long it's going to take for it to come back. But this is what I wanted to go ahead and get to. Now, if I need more, then all I need to do is I can just grind off the drill. And now that the hole has been dug, uh, I won't have to worry about digging the hole manually in order to make room for placing things. I could just go ahead, I can cut off the drill, make a few more components, put another piston on the end of this one, put the drill back on, uh, and then I could just go ahead and run the whole thing again. And running two pistons at the same time, I'll cut the speed in half so I'm not running it too fast. So they'll be probably 0 0.02 or 0 0.03. And then I'll just run them down. And you could, you could drill down a long way. Uh, I'm sure that at some point, stacking that many pistons together, it would start to get a little unstable. But by the time that happens, I will be long gone. And so therefore, it doesn't really matter. So this is... Uh, where we are going to leave this for today, um, as soon as I can get up the ramp there. We have, we have power, we have our basic assembler, we have our basic refinery, we have our respawn point, we have our, our kit all set and ready to go. We have a way to recharge our power on our suit, and we have a cargo container which is got a lot of cargo space left in it and so therefore I don't have to worry about running out of space anytime soon. So we're gonna call this here. So enough for today. Uh, when we come back I will be building myself a basic rover so that I can go out and explore and find cobalt and some of the other necessary materials and probably extending the the drill apparatus. As always like our appreciated subscriptions doubly so. This is Darkizer signing off. Thank you for watching.